We've got about a minute, but we'll go ahead and get started. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about chaining up the vehicles again, especially after today. Luckily there were no tow trucks called, but a lot of pickup use and producers' blades to get people out of ditches and stuck. And Thanks, supervisors. So as usual, I will show us a little video. Maybe I will. Here we go. Some of these fun ones you find online. You know, they're, they're informative. Hi, my name is Mike, Tire Chains R Us. Today, we're going to show you how to install standard service or general service tire chain on this semi-tire. The first thing you should do is lay your chain on the side of the tire. You're looking for unexpected wear or damage, and also to make sure that the links aren't twisted. The next step is to lay this up over the tire and a couple things to remember. The hooks should always be pointing outward and upward. And your cams, your cam tightens, should always be on the outside of the tire. The other goal when you set the chain up here is to make sure that this outside chain link rests somewhere in the middle of the sidewalk. So after inspecting the chain, grab it somewhat in the center, lay it up over that first tire. The idea is to make sure this chain lands somewhere in the middle of the sidewall of the tire. So again, you're looking for twists, making sure that it lays naturally and fits on the tire square. And then with this next set's chain in the front, tuck it into the tire as close as you can so that when you move the vehicle forward, it's that much closer to the chain in the back, so you're ready to line up. So I like this. Flush it up to the front, and now we're ready to roll the truck forward. Okay, we've moved the truck forward so the chain is rolled up a little higher on the tire, and the excess chain now lays below the tire, which is exactly what you want. Again, the first thing you're going to do is start with this side chain hook, and you're going to get the inside fastened first. So the key is to try to keep all of your cross chains in parallel so that you know you've got a good square set. And you want to get this side chain hook as tight as you can. Uh, but obviously, if it fights you too hard, just take the, the lesser hook. What I like to do is, is get to the chain where you think you're going to hook and then pull the excess links back and lock them behind your fingers so it's out of the way. And then simply hook that chain. Bring the cross chains around and now grab the side chain faster. Here again, you want to hook this as tight as you can to begin with. That'll make your tightening process easier down the way. Start with the length you think you're going to get. Lock the excess length behind your hand. Feed it through the side chain fastener. And then bring the locking clip over. I always like to double check for fitment, make sure we're still on the sidewall. The next step of the installation process is to use your cam tool and your cam tighteners. So as an FYI, many chains are sold to fit a variety of sizes of tires. So this chain in particular has four cam locks. And the rule of thumb is you'd like to use them all, but you don't have to. So each situation is going to be different. The end goal is to get the chain to fit right. So if that means tightening two or three or all four, that's what it means. I'll show you how to do that here, and then we'll see how many we have to tighten on this tire. On this tire. This is your cam tightener tool. It inserts into this, and you always turn to the right, or clockwise. I like to work around the tire, tightening as you go, and you can notice there's significant slack here. But by the time our cam, all of our cam tighteners are adjusted, we should take care of that. Now that we've tightened all four, you can tell the chain's tight and it fits well. For added insurance, I like to use a chain adjuster, which keeps tension on this, and in case something happens where a cam would break, then you've got a backup plan. The other thing that's important is once it's installed at this stage, to roll the truck forward 10, 12, 15 feet and just check it again for fitment. After that, it's good to stop at an eighth or a quarter of a mile and check it one more time. 
The other thing to keep in mind, with chains installed, top speeds are 30 or 35 miles an hour. So with, with chains comes an added responsibility to slow the truck down and make sure it handles properly. And you notice the truck wasn't stuck six inches deep in the mud either. <laughs> and it's not dark and there wasn't a wood Yeah. Or is there ice and snow on it? Yeah. All the chains. Uh, we're taking the little tool and knocking the all the ice out of the and and yeah. <laughs> Okay, folks, now that we watch that, um, some of the things on chaining up. If you break them, fix them. Don't leave them hung all torn up for the next guy because then you're just going to make them start late. Or when they need them, they're going to be in a bind. We got chain tools. We got links. We got all kinds of stuff. They're out there in the connects, right, Kyle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, take the time to repair your stuff. Make sure you have the right size chains to fit your truck. Ideally, before it was snowing and muddy, you got them out and double checked them and make sure they're good to go. Test fit them, make sure everything's gonna fit just right. Big thing, don't take them off another unit. You might get one that's the wrong size, or once again, you're just gonna screw your other drivers because now they're gonna come in and they have no chains on their truck. Kyle's got a huge rack outside by the Connex. Go through them. I know that a lot of you guys spend a lot of time repairing chains and getting them ready to go. Look for chains in there. Chain laws a little bit for Colorado. If they apply a chain laws, and it says you have to, to have chains, especially for your Rollins drivers, be in compliance with those. There's certain areas, it's not all of the areas of Colorado, but if they say everywhere ends up uh, needing chain law, and you get stuck or cause a problem without chains on, you know, there's some fines up there. You know, if you don't have them on, it's a $500 fine plus a $79 surcharge for not putting your chains on. $1,000 and 157 if you block the roadway. So think about that going down into that Walden country. None of those highways are usually set for mandatory chain law, but it is Colorado. You never know when they're going to do something. Wyoming, we do have a chain law also that if you have to chain, most of the time that's on the interstate, especially I-80 and that where the sisters are, they'll have those blinking signs say chain law in effect. If Wyoming, <coughs> the barriers say chain law in effect, you have to have at least singles on your outside tires, on your drive axles. Not complying is a minimum of $250 fine, but look at that, if you block the roadway, they're going to zap you for 750 bucks for not chaining up properly. Texas and New Mexico are one of those that they really don't care. They say you can chain if you want to, you don't have to chain. The chance of you using chains down in those two areas are really slim. Because <coughs> down there, especially in Orla, it'll rain like crazy. It turns into a little bit of water, a little bit of mud. You can't go anywhere. You can't turn, you can't do anything. But then given an hour, it dries up and it's hard pack again. <coughs> Excuse me, Sierra's gonna be sending out some uh, Vermilion contractor orientation. Uh, we attended the Vermilion safety update the other day. For the Rockies, they have a new safety manager or director. He is the Vermilion Global Safety Director. So he's very by the book. And I'll just hit a few little things on here that he, uh, he wants to talk about here in a minute. MVR follow-ups from Jay. If you get email from Jay saying, hey, I got some paperwork you need to fill out, which will be an MVR request, or the DESA Clearinghouse, or not DESA, the FMCSA Clearinghouse, that'll only apply to guys with CDLs. You have to set up an <laughs> online account through the feds for the clearinghouse that you fill in all your stuff and all the drug and alcohol testing goes in there that makes it easier for companies to pull your results from. So he's trying to get everybody set up there. If you're not sure how to do it, Jay can talk you through it pretty quickly. It is a federal system. It's kind of a pain in the butt. And it's very simple to do, but it like the website hangs up and you're just like, okay, what's next? That's all of it. You've already signed up. A lot of issues right now with personal conveyance for those that have it. Just a refresher on personal conveyance for a driver. You cannot use personal conveyance if you're under dispatch to go to a load. You cannot use personal conveyance to go to maintenance. Cannot use it to go to fuel. Can't use it 
anything job related to better the your ability to work. Um, you end your day and you know what your next load is and technically if you drive out and sleep on that location you're bettering the position of the company. Because then the, the auditors would look at that and go, well, you knew what your load was and you drove out there, so that's further in the, of the business and they'll say that's an illegal use of personal conveyance. So be very careful about that. Sure, you can run into the truck stop, get food, whatever. Technically, you're supposed to drop your trailer if you're running around like that. But as long as you're putting some remarks in there that I'm getting supplies for me, not the truck to live out in the field for three or four days. That's a proper use of it. Got a little safety quiz here for you. If a barrel's 42 gallons, how much in gallons is one hogshead? First correct answer will give you $25 prairie co points for the company store. Wine or beer? <laughs> They're different. They're different. Gallons, 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 gallons yeah. a gallon on this. Wine is 63, beer is and this came up when we had our incident this weekend. Alan made a comment about there's not quite a hog's head on the ground, or thank God it's not a hog's head on the ground. And I thought Alan was being a smart ass. Sit at home last night on Jeopardy. How many gallons in a hog's head? So if Alex Trebek says it's true, you know, it's got to be true. But if anybody knows what that is, let's hear a no. 36. Nope. nope. 54. Nope. Nope. Think about that, let's see or no. First answer, we'll get a card. And with that, our safety focus word for the week is don't wake your chain up, do it before you need it. Vermilion, let's talk about this a little bit. And it'll only affect drivers or any of the mechanics that might go to a Vermilion location for a road call. You have to have the Vermilion uh, orientation. We've been hauling for Vermilion for what, three plus years, we've never done an orientation with them new safety director says, whoa, this has got to change. <laughs> We've had this forever and nobody's enforced it. So Sierra will be sending everybody email with a link to IS Networld for their orientation. You can do it at your computer at home. I think you can get to it on your phone. Tablets, I think you can do it. Fill out all the information they're asking for because they will send you their orientation sticker. If you don't fill that in, um, I'm sure they'll send them to Sierra and you'll have to bug her for them. But we need to get those done pretty quickly because it's almost getting towards the end of 2020 and we've never done them. Also, one thing he stressed huge is speed limits on their locations. If you are on the lease, once you cross the cattle guard, on the location itself, three and a half miles an hour. Walking speed. And that stems from people being run over on some of their locations in Canada. So he's a very stickler on that. Also, anywhere around the chews and uh, chimney combs, they're putting out signs. So on the lease roads proper, watch for their speed limit signs. They're 15 miles an hour. And that's at the landowner request. In fact, when we sat there, Jason and I were leaving, one of the gals that works for Vermilion was saying, boy, your trucks haul ass up and down Mills Road and some of these. It's the perception. You guys are doing the speed limits up there. But it's the perception with the dust plumes, especially in dry weather. Just think about that and adjust your speed accordingly. Four gas monitors are absolutely required on Vermilion. They got to be on and in the breathing zone. And this one, he is a stickler on. If you don't follow this, if you think he catches you or any of his pumpers or staff catch you sitting in the truck, when you have fluids moving, you will be banned from Vermilion locations for life. So don't get caught doing that. And you will see him quite a lot because he's very, very proactive. It's not Vermilion against us. It's Vermilion wanting to help us enforce our own rules and be safe all the way around. <clears throat> Sal's maintenance moment. He didn't send me anything for today, but I heard a couple comments over here. If you guys are doing DVIRs, make sure you open a DVIR and label it for your trailer. Don't put the trailer stuff under the tractor. It makes it a real pain for these guys to create new DVIRs for the trailer. You can do a DVIR on tractor or trailer. Make sure you're doing them on both pieces of equipment. Don't lump them all under 522. And everything's actually on the trailer. Create a DVIR for the trailer. You guys have anything else you want to talk about? What's a hogshead? 
Uh, James Fleming got it right. It's 63 gallons. Good job, James. 63 gallons in a hogshead. Okay. Some of the operation stuff. Um, and Jason's <laughs> going to talk to you here in a bit, or Kyle. But anybody tell me what's happening to the hoses at the fuel island? That's the fuel nozzle. Get drunk across the catwalk and throw them around. Yep, absolutely. Those are over $200 a piece. And gosh, we've, what, Joel replaced like four of them in the last month? So it adds up really, really quick. And that's when you get all the drips and leaks. And yeah, yeah, we've. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it's. They replaced one. Can you put them up and put them on a spring or something? So Gilby's looking at something like that, like the okay. at the gas stations where it can pivot. But the problem is, it gets really expensive on a lot of those things. But he is looking, Randy. So that's a good point. And. Uh, well, what so, you could do is just put something we can set on the catwalk, mud flap, set it over. You just set it on that and you we, walk around and grab it. We could. Um, we'd probably, I bet you we have some out-of-service mud flaps that we could leave out there. Well, yeah, you could do that, or you could just not be lazy and reach far enough across the catwalk and walk around the other side and pick it up because I don't drag it across. <clears throat> you can reach both sides halfway across. You walk around the other side of your truck and you pick it up and you pull it over across. Yeah, try to protect those because... I know I am. It's a lot of work. Sorry. But, Try to protect those because we are spending a lot of money on just replacing those nozzles. Had a few spills out there again here lately that uh, we don't know who and what and where and why, but boy, they're there. Uh, we appreciate it that the guys that have had a few little spills out there come and tell us about it. Remember not to leave that thing in your fuel tank when you drive away. <laughs> had one of those last week. Luckily, it didn't do anything but come out of the thing. We were lucky on it, but... Once again, it's flopping all over the ground now. What else do you have for operations? Uh, just make sure everybody fixes their chains. You break them, you fix them. That is a big complaint that I get a lot, is the previous driver has not fixed their chains. Chains and simple fixes that you can do on the road, get a hold of the supervisors. They will help you out for simple fixes on things. You know, they don't all have chain tools in their pickups. We only have them in here. So once again, that gets pretty costly to equip each supervisor with chain tool and links and everything else. Just take the time to go through them. Make sure they're all good. Shop folks, you have anything that in particular that sticks out for you guys? And that's all we have for you this week. We appreciate it. Make sure you check those chains and don't think of hogshead of oil on the ground. <laughs> Barrel's bad enough. Hogshead we don't want. <laughs> Thanks all. <laughs>